five fifth? I thought you turned it down. Mm. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to Sixty. So today's episode is on the mighty N54 E46 M3 with a single turbo conversion. What a mouthful that is! But it's the one that we're doing the AHP Turbo Lamic install on. And I think Dan's starting to get excited. He has worked out how to connect the Haltech. So this is going to be a bit more of a technical video in basically setting up the Lamic to work with a Haltech or any aftermarket ECU. I suppose it's going to be relevant. But since the last video and how this video ended, some of you would have got to the end. We, we did this. So yeah, that was at about 8 o'clock at night after the last dyno tuning session. We wanted to see how the clutch drops were going to affect the drivetrain, if it was going to work okay, if it was going to slip the transmission. Turns out it works too well and broke an axle. Um, now Dan was not too put off by that. Uh, I, I can't remember what time we left that night, but it got worse. He put a set of axles in that he had spare. This car was on the original axle. So that axle that he just broke was the original one. He knew they weren't going to last forever because he uses it as a drift car. So we put another set of axles in and then Dan did this. Please don't break. Yes, so in the space of about half an hour, he managed to destroy two right-hand rear axles. Now, did some delving into that, and he's worked out that it is to do with, I can't remember the settings, but there's a setting in the Lamic which affects how aggressive clutch kicks are, and it was just set to not slip. If you let your foot off the pedal, it was letting the clutches out and biting, and I think it was just a bit too aggressive, even though we were on street tires, not great surface, so you can imagine what it would do on a prepped surface. Anyway. We think we've got that sorted, but let's go and speak to Dan because I want to show you guys what he's done to get the Haltech communicating with the Lamic because I want to get these shift cuts. I want to get the pops on the shift, so let's see if we can get it happening. Oh, and actually a few people have asked about the clutch by wire setup. Let me show you the sensor. Okay, so here we go. Hopefully you can see, we'll get these wires out of the way because we're still sort of playing with this, but we have a Haltech linear potentiometer. It's bolted to the steering column right there and then it goes down to the clutch pedal at this point here and yeah you move the clutch and the sensor moves so that sensor it basically sends a zero to five volt signal to the lamic and then the lamic uses that to essentially fake a clutch now keep in mind these do have they've got the torque converter which is a lockup torque converter so it has a clutch pack and then someone correct me if i'm wrong they've got five other clutch packs throughout the transmission and that's how it selects the eight gears by using a combination of those five clutches and it's not like a, a synchro gearbox it uses the clutches to engage the gear it's not using synchros to engage physical gears, there's planetary gears. To be honest, if you've got time, go and have a look at how an 8HP works, it's fascinating. Anyway, what it does with the clutch pedal, it disengages all the clutches. So as you push that clutch down, well, I assume it's all the clutches. Somebody at Turbo Lamic might know exactly, but yeah, it's almost like all of those five clutches are then disengaged. And as you let the clutch pedal out, it then re-engages the clutches in the gearbox that's necessary to give you the gear that you're currently in. So when you're drifting, if you're in seventh gear and you put the clutch in, it will disengage the clutches that are required for seventh gear and then bring seventh gear back in when you let the pedal out. I hope that makes sense. A few people have asked about how clutch by wire works, but from what we've seen driving around the car park now, it's, it's just like a manual. It's pretty wild. Anyway, let's talk to Dan and he's going to show you guys what he did to get the Lamic working with the Haltech. We've got Daniel. I've just switched over to the iPhone, so we've got a bit clearer view of the screen. So could you explain what you did, Dan? Okay, um, so this is the Tuner Pro that you use to talk to the Lamic. Um, up here, these are our CAN settings if you want to connect to the Haltech. Basically, this is the send ID. 705 is the number you want in here. This mimics a Haltech IO Box B. Important things to note here, the CAN out maximum value needs to be 4096, otherwise it won't work. Um, in here, you have uh, the IO box has four analog inputs for the Haltech, and this uh, CSB V3 analog channels, these is where you choose what you want on those individual channels. Um, if you hover over here, it gives you a little number of what you want to output. So you can see on analog one, I'm outputting 13, which is oil temp. Analog two, outputting gear target. Um, analog 3 is 18, which is the torque reduction table, and then 16 is the program selector. So they output to the Haltech from the Lamic, 
Uh, CAN2 speed needs to be set up as four, which is one megabit. Um, if you hover over the thing here, it gives you the four different speeds that you can choose. Haltech runs on one megabit, so this needs to be set to four. And you need to set this CSB V3 ID to on and save that, and then it will talk to the Haltech. So that's everything on the Lamex side. What did you have to do on the Haltech to get the Haltech to work? Um, look, shout out to Lawrence. Uh, he was really helpful in setting this up and getting it to talk to the Haltech to begin with. On the Haltech side, it's pretty straightforward. You go to set up your inputs. So we have our gear and selector wiring here, which we set up on our IO box B analog voltage input two. You don't need to enable a pull up. And then from there, we can detect our gear position. And these are the voltages we use. To find these voltages in the Lamic, there is a table for the gear output voltage. Um, so if we go in here to our analog outputs, there's a gear output voltage table. This shows us at zero volts, we output R, half a volt, we output N, one volt, we output one through to eight. Then you fill those settings in here on this Haltech um, table and that allows the Haltech to see which gear it's in. Awesome. So that's basically how you've got the Haltech reading the data from the Lamec. How do you make the Haltech make popping sounds on the shift? Um, so we're outputting our torque reduction request. Which is uh, all I care about, by the way. <laughs> we're outputting our torque reduction request, uh, as we saw before, on analog voltage three from the Lamec. Okay, now that is, that's basically gonna be a zero to five volt signal yep. from the, the Lamec, okay, cool. Um, and on the Haltech, on the IO box, I've got it set up as a paddle shift input. Yep. Um, just to here, analog voltage three. It's very sensitive, um, so we set this to point 0.1 and 0. So the up puddle is activated instantly when the, uh, when the LAMIC requests some torque reduction. And then we set up a flat shift table in here, um, which on the puddle shift, up shift, we want ignition cut. Maximum shift time of 350 milliseconds, and the LAMIC doesn't take that long, but that's just in case something happens. And then here, we have our cut percentage table, which cuts 90% of ignition events through to 0% of ignition events across 180 milliseconds. And that's what should make it go pop. All right, well, I guess it's just a matter of we'll run it up on the dyno and we'll see if it pops. Yeah, hopefully. You jump in, I'll film. So, that was kind of cool. I filmed it with my iPhone because I thought it might look a little bit better. It's a bit dark in there. But you can see, okay, so you've got the shifts there. It's not popping as much as I'd like there. Mm. But this, this car does have a proper muffler system on it. You can hear it's not that loud. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, manifold pressure. So that's through each of the shifts. So we had four shifts in that video. And there is a little, you can, you can see a cut and you can see a little puff of smoke. So it is working. It just doesn't sound like a race car. But this car doesn't sound like a race car. Okay. But one thing that Dan loves that these 8 HPs do is how solid the power graph is. So even with ignition cut, it's, so that's, that's 520 wheel horsepower. Oh, 550? I thought you turned it down. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so we're looking at 550 first gear. Wow. Well, you must have started in third? Uh, yeah, I think I started in third. So we've got third, fourth, I guess fifth. It must be this shift and then sixth. Six. So it holds over that 520 to 550 horsepower the whole way through. Does not drop off. Man, I think this is gonna work really well for drifting. Yeah, I think so. So guys, something that I don't think we've told everybody yet, but there is a test night on tomorrow night. And we've gotta make sure this clutch by wire is gonna work. We've gotta make sure the car's actually gonna work for the main drift event. So I'll be there filming Dan tomorrow. What's your confidence? You gonna snap an axle straight away? 
Yeah, look, I'm a little bit skeptical on the axles at the moment, but we'll see. Hopefully the new Lamex settings on the clutch work well enough to hold them together. Protect the drivetrain, but also still make it feel like a manual. Guys, I'm really interested to see how it works. I hope it really works well because this is what I told Dan it would do. Anyway, we'll see how we go. Thank you all for watching. If you've got any questions about the technical side, Dan is in all the comments, aren't you? Yes. He loves comments. It's like he's got nothing better to do but answer comments. Um, now he's a very busy man. I really appreciate him letting me be here filming these videos. And thank you all for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. See ya.